when we're thinking about prescribed burning and weather conditions, uh, we have to bear in mind we are prescribing for different objectives. We hope to achieve, we intend to achieve specific objective or set of objectives with prescribed burn. And because of those objectives differ, uh, the weather conditions under which we prescribe a burn will also differ. Uh, and of course there are also different environments. So I think uh, anybody would understand that if you're burning in the panhandle of Oklahoma and short grass prairie, uh, the objectives would, be, would differ, the weather conditions would differ, uh, say from southeast Oklahoma and uh, pine blue stem, uh, maybe with mixed, mixed with oak trees. Uh, different weather conditions, different fuels, and then different objectives. When we think about weather, I like to think about two different uh, components of weather. One is the atmospheric conditions, and that would be wind speed, temperature, and relative humidity. Uh, and the second would be the influence of weather on fuels, and fuel moisture in particular. And by fuel moisture, we're talking about both live plants, and then dead material or dead fuels. Again, weather is one of the main key elements for conducting a prescribed burn. Uh, again, you know, monitoring weather prior to the burn, trying to determine which day meets the prescription that you have prescribed for that particular burn that you're going to that you're going to do, is very important. But also, one of the other important factors is is on-site weather, because you have you have a weather forecast, and it tells you what they pr predict the temperatures to be, the wind speeds to be, the wind directions, relative humidity, those key factors to be. But what we have to remember is, number one, that's a forecast, and it's just what they, their best guesstimate of what the weather's gonna be at that time. Then the next thing is, is a lot of times they have observed weather, and that's typically at a weather station that may be several miles away from where you're actually burning. And so that can be a huge difference in the actual conditions where you're at on your site compared to what they're reporting or what they're predicting from. And so an on-site, some type of instrument to read on-site weather is very key to, to having a safe prescribed burn. And one of the best things that you can use is a digital weather instrument like this one that I have here to, to read and to get on-site weather information right prior to when you burn. It's also important to take while you're burning so you can get what the conditions are, if they're changing, you know, is it getting hotter and drier? Uh, you know, so if, if, if that's the case, you know, we may need to slow down, watch for ch potential spot fire areas, problems that may develop, or is the conditions changing? Is the humidity going up, the temperature going down, wind speeds are going down, so, you know, some, some type of adverse condition might occur. So it just helps us monitor the weather. And so it's very important to have that on-site type weather. And so again, with one of these digital weather instruments, you, they're quick and easy to use, and you can get the weather right here on your site real easy. One thing you need to remember when choosing a weather instrument is to choose one that will give you the information that you need. So make sure, for a minimum, I recommend that you have one that reads temperature, relative humidity, and wind speeds. Those three items are essential for each one. There, many of these weather instruments have a lot more different things. They'll give you dew point, barometric pressure, a lot of that other stuff, and that's fine. To operate them, they're very simple typically to operate. They typically have an on-off switch, which you just, a button that you turn off and on, and then you can scroll through their menu and get wind speeds, temperatures, relative humidities. This particular one here gives you wind speed, but with that it gives you the maximum wind gust, the average wind speed since you've turned it on and it's been reading. Then it will give you the temperature, wind chill, goes to relative humidity, heat index, dew point, just on that. And this is one of the simplest ones that you can get. And it's also reach, meets all the minimum requirements for the things that we need with it. One of the things we gotta remember when we operate them is to make sure that you, you follow instructions on how to operate them, how to do them. The other thing is, is when you do take your on-site weather, you wanna take, take the weather at sites just like where you're gonna be burning at. So, you know, if you're in a forested situation, you don't wanna stand out in the broad open middle of nowhere that looks totally different than what you're burning in. 
Same reason is if you're burning in an open grassland area, you don't want to go get behind a bunch of trees or stand in the shade. You want to take your weather in the same kind of conditions that you're going to be burning in. Also, once you light the fire and, you, and things are burning, you want to take your weather, make sure you step away from the fire because again, the heat can affect the temperature, which in turn can affect the relative humidity and other readings that are on there. Yeah.